What's up guys? Welcome back to Rack of Lamb. Before I begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to a supportive viewer who's been watching my videos and recently left me this comment. Just when I was considering changing my greeting to something like, howdy y'all, or what's up? I get a sweet message like that from you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do try to stay engaged and read every single comment on my channel. So for a chance to be featured, leave me a line below. So as you all may know, I am a busy, full-time working mother. While I do love being in the kitchen, my schedule can get so hectic that it leaves me no time to cook for myself or my other half. But thanks to store-bought frozen foods, I can whip up something delicious and rather healthy in less than 20 minutes. So today I will be sharing a list of some of my favorite frozen Asian foods and how I prepare them. Most of which are probably just package instructions. You can probably find most of them in your local Asian supermarket, so what are you waiting for? And if this video was helpful to you, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Pork buns or ta siu bao is one of my all-time favorites. While I have made them myself, these frozen ones come in so handy. Just place them onto a plate and steam over boiling water for 10 to 15 minutes or until fully cooked. I know you're dying to see how it looks inside. I can tell you that the meat is nicely marinated and the bun is moist. Here's another brand that I would recommend. Albeit a bit smaller, the Tasio filling is just as delicious and a tad fattier. Similarly, just steam for 10 to 15 minutes over boiling water and they're ready to be eaten. If you want to take a shot at making your homemade Tasio bao, don't forget to check out my air fryer tasu video. If you know me well, you know that I have a strong attachment to Chinese baos. Here is another frozen option, pork and vegetable buns. These are slightly bigger than the tasu baos and the filling is more compact, so I steam them for 15 to 20 minutes. Likewise, despite being frozen, the filling is juicy and the bread is moist. The third frozen item are these potstickers by Prime Food, by far the best manufacturer for frozen potstickers and dumplings. There's a wide selection to choose from and multiple filling choices. Shown here are just two of my recommendations. To make these potstickers or wa teat, Begin by boiling some water in a wok or steamer. You can follow package instructions and fry them on a pan until they turn yellow, adding water until they evaporate. But I like to boil mine for 10 minutes then fry them until golden brown. The package instructions may be easier with less cookware to wash, but my other half thinks cooking it our way results in juice to your skin and filling. After boiling for 10 minutes, I drain them in my colander and give them a few shakes to remove excess water. I advise that you don't let them sit in a strainer too long as the skin will begin to stick together. Next, heat about 1 tablespoon of oil on a non-stick pan, swirling to coat evenly. Place the potstickers in the pan, flat side down, and fry them until golden brown. Whichever method you choose will result in a crunchy skin and juicy filling, making these delicacies oh so delicious. Explains why they are an essential part of Chinese culture. The colors of the fried skin are so easy on the eyes. You may also steam or boil them for a healthier option, but note that the skin will be rather thick. I like to enjoy these potstickers with dumpling sauce that can also be found at your local Asian supermarket. 
and can't forget the chopsticks. The fourth frozen item I will be sharing are these Fuzhou fish balls or Fukzhou Yudan. Simply heat up some water, then boil these fish balls for 10 to 15 minutes. If you've never had these, you are in for a pleasant surprise. The flavorful ground meat hidden inside will leave you wanting more. The fifth frozen item I recommend are these frozen boiled eel or unagi. You may recognize them at Japanese restaurants. First, I soak them in some warm water to defrost them. Because the eel is so thin, defrosting doesn't require a long wait. After it's been defrosted, I cover the interior of my air fryer basket with a sheet of aluminum foil, place the entire eel over the foil, then air fry at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 minutes. Yes, this unagi only took 5 minutes to cook. Can you believe that? Who said you can't present your family with a gourmet meal on a hectic day? I usually divide the eel up into portions. Pour a generous amount of furikake over some rice. Lay a piece of the eel over the seasoned rice, paired with some sliced avocado. Then have your meal with some wasabi. Oishi! Another way I like to prepare these eel is musubi style. Place some rice in an empty spam can covered with saran wrap. Likewise, season your rice with some furikake. Cut an eel that is approximately the same width as a spam can and lay it over the bed of rice. Now remove the plastic wrap and gently press all the components together to avoid them from falling apart when eaten. Now wrap it with a piece of nori and voila! Who would have known that this beautiful snack was made with frozen eel? The next frozen item are these pork and shrimp wontons, also by Prime Food. Simply dump them in boiling water and boil for about 10 minutes. If you've seen my What I Eat in a Day video, you know that I enjoy these wontons with some wonton noodles. It's probably the quickest way to make one tan mean. As shown earlier in the video, Prime Food makes some of the best frozen potstickers. However, since the skin on these potstickers are rather thick, they are not preferable for steaming or boiling. For boiled or steamed dumplings, I'd recommend these, which also come in various fillings. I'm trying out a new one this time, pork and cabbage with black fungus and mushroom. Boil these dumplings for 15 minutes and make sure you continuously stir to avoid them from sticking to your cookware. Notice the thinner skin that shrivels up after boiling? Enjoy these while they're still hot with the same dumpling sauce I've shown earlier or with some hot sauce. My last frozen recommendation are these fried fish cakes. My family loves barbecuing with these because they're soft, cooks in a matter of minutes, and are a kid favorite. At home, I just dump them in boiling water and they're ready in 5-6 to six minutes. They're commonly referred to as fish tofu because, well, they kind of resemble a tofu, but I think they're so much yummier. They're also versatile and can be eaten alone or with an assortment of fish balls like I've shown here. 
Well, I hope my frozen Asian food recommendations can be helpful to you busy people. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.